From Russian space satellites buried in warehouses to a missile base buried under a sheet of Arctic ice, these are nine futuristic technologies that were secretly abandoned. Crazy. Number 9. Balaklava Submarine Base In a city in Siberia known as Balaklava, a secret underground base that held submarines of the Soviet Union quietly hid military technology from the outside world. There were nuclear-armed subs that could have destroyed the whole city if they'd been discovered. But during the Cold War, no one knew about this place, which was built between 1953 and 1961. It was dug into the side of the Tavros Mountain, taking 120 tons of solid rock out of the ground and carving a man-made cave to serve as the underground port for some of the deadliest ships in human history. Many secret programs took place in this base, including a plan where special trainers taught dolphins how to attach explosives to enemy ships or submarines. I've heard of war elephants, but not war dolphins. When the Soviet Union fell in the early 1990s, the base was closed. By 1993, there was nothing stopping looters from coming in and stripping the place bare. More recently, in 2014, Russia actually annexed the Crimea region and turned the area into a museum. Its spook inn was abandoned for many years and housed some earth-shattering power. That's worth a second look for sure. Have any of you been to this or any other decommissioned military base? What were they like? Let me know in a comment, and if you like this topic, don't forget to subscribe for more awesome videos coming out all the time. They are full of awesome facts you didn't know you needed to know. Number 8. Varan-class Orbiter It is no secret that man has tried for decades to conquer space. In that time, various countries have tried their hand at launching spacecraft of one type or another, but that doesn't mean every single one is a success. The first spacecraft produced as part of the Soviet space program had a very short lifespan. In fact, it only took one spaceflight, known as the Buran, which means snowstorm or blizzard. The craft was built in the 1980s and was the first operational shuttle orbiter to come out of Russia. Construction of the plane began in 1980. Four years later, the first full-scale orbiter was ready for launch, and it lifted off while attached to the back of the Energia rocket before separation. The craft completed two orbits around the Earth before descending and returning to the launch site. Plans continued to have a second unmanned flight by 1993, but as the Soviet Union dissolved, funding dried up and additional flights were canceled. With a wingspan of almost 80 feet and weighing in at almost 50 tons, the craft was an impressive feat of engineering. It was further showcased at the 1989 Paris Air Show and with two other craft due to be built in the early 1990s. Unfortunately, plans were scrapped and the Buran was mothballed in a hangar in Kazakhstan. The future of any other Buran ships came crashing down when the roof of the hangar collapsed, killing eight workers and destroying the original spacecraft as well as a mock-up of the Energia booster rocket that helped propel the craft into space. A real tragedy with both loss of life and the destruction of an amazing technological advancement. This marked a disappointing and anticlimactic end to the space program that showed such promise to the people of Russia. Number 7. The Hiller Flying Platform In the 1950s, a company known as Hiller Helicopters signed a contract to build a prototype of a small flying machine for the Office of Naval Sciences. Nine months later, engineers unveiled the first design of what was dubbed the Flying Platform. Built for the Army-Navy program, the one-man flying vehicle was controlled by the pilot by leaning in the desired direction. Using a special dual-direction fan for elevation, the platform was practically incapable of falling, meaning if the pilot leaned too far, the platform would simply slow down rather than flip over. The prototype, called 1031-A-1, was completely unprecedented at the time. With a platform diameter of just over 8 feet and a height of 7 feet, this weird device weighed in at almost 400 pounds. The Army later contracted for a larger model called the VZ-1 Pawnee, but the extra engines it needed made it so heavy that it was impossible for pilots to control the craft by leaning, effectively defeating the purpose of the design. In total, six flying platforms were built, and although the possibility of controlled flight on a wingless aircraft seemed like a novel idea, the fact that it could only reach speeds of up to 16 miles per hour made it a research vehicle to study aerodynamics more than anything else. Would you want to have your own flying platform? Let me know what you'd use it for in the comment section below. Number 6. Russian Tupolev Tu-144 Aircraft The Concorde is one of the most infamous airplanes ever created. It is well known for letting passengers zip across the Atlantic Ocean in less than four hours. 
But did you know the Soviet Union built a similar aircraft that flew earlier? In the 1960s, a Russian aerospace firm created five prototypes of a supersonic passenger plane. The first result was the Tupolev Tu-144, but these initial designs definitely had some differences compared to their better-known Western rivals. With a frame built with panels instead of a solid fuselage like the original Concorde, the craft suffered deep cracks and problems under lighter stress than originally predicted. After all, these airplanes were traveling faster than the speed of sound and twice as high as traditional jet aircraft. Stress is part of the job. But the Russian firm wanted to be the first to finish their supersonic passenger plane, and it showed. In an attempt to beat other nations who were trying to come up with similar designs, the first version of this hyperfast aircraft didn't have functioning toilets. It also lacked fire control suppression systems and could not break other than by using a parachute. There was also reportedly no insulation for passengers' comfort, and it was reportedly such a loud, bumpy ride that passengers had to pass notes to have a conversation. Initial test flights only clocked in at about 800 hours, compared to the 5,000 hours used to test each Concorde plane. But the Russians got their way when their first prototype rolled off the assembly line a full two months before the Concorde. Requiring two pilots and one engineer to fly, the plane could hold up to 120 business class passengers and reach speeds of up to Mach 2.04 or more than 1,300 miles per hour. Conspiracy theories surround the creation of the plane, with some believing it was built from Concorde plans stolen by Russian spies. Others believe that the Concorde team, knowing the Russians might try to stage a coup, created fake plans with several design flaws, which could be why the Tu-144 only flew en route from Moscow once a week. The government is said to have had such little confidence in a successful flight that no reports of the flight surfaced until after they had already been completed. This way, if the plane were to crash, the government could try to simply pretend like the flight never happened. The fate of the plane would come to a disastrous end when it performed risky maneuvers at the 1973 Paris Air Show. It ended up crashing and killing several people in nearby homes as well as the entire crew. By the 1980s, the plane had been almost completely phased out except for very few occasional military flights by the Soviet Union. In the 1990s, NASA funded a special program to leverage this unique and powerful plane for an advanced technical research working together with Russian scientists. By the end of the 20th century, that project was canceled as well, and now two 144s retired to be a museum piece and a historical curiosity. Number 5. Helios Spacecraft NASA is the biggest name when it comes to the space race, but their idea for a solar-powered satellite wasn't such a big hit. Known as the Helios prototype, the flying wing aircraft was remotely piloted and was created to demonstrate sustained flight at heights of up to 100,000 feet as well as being able to fly non-stop for at least 24 hours. The first launch of the aircraft took place in 1999 and although it flew for five years, it never did go higher than 100,000 feet, but it came close. In 2001, the craft reached an unofficial world record height of 96,863 feet and stayed over 96,000 feet for more than 40 minutes during a test flight over Hawaii. With a wingspan of 247 feet, longer than both the U.S. Air Force Transport and the Boeing 747 airliner, the Helios is made from carbon fiber, Kevlar, and a thin transparent plastic skin. Assembled in six sections, each one about 41 feet long, the craft was powered by electric motors mounted across its entire wingspan. Controlled remotely by a pilot on the ground in either a mobile control van or a fixed station, the craft's flight could be terminated by the use of a parachute system delivered on command and a homing beacon to locate it once it's safely back on the ground. Unfortunately, the final flight of the Helios came in 2003 when it experienced structural failure while flying over the island of Kayawi. The mishap has been chalked up to the inability to predict the craft's sensitivity to changes in the atmosphere, such as turbulence. The craft became unstable and after rapidly increasing speeds, pressure caused the wings to fail and solar cells on the upper surface to tear off. The result was the aircraft falling into the Pacific Ocean, a sad end to what could have been a game changer for NASA. What do you think? Could it still be down under the sea, waiting for a treasure hunter to find it in the seas of Hawaii? It's not likely as NASA did find most of the destroyed pieces of the plane, but one can always hope. Number 4. Phobos Grunt Probe as various space programs worked to send their craft into space, the race began to bring back life from other planets. But one Russian probe known as the Phobos Grunt wasn't so successful. Launched to study Phobos, a moon near Mars, the spacecraft had one mission, to return soil samples to determine the origin and evolution of this moon. 
It would be Russia's first interplanetary mission since a previous unsuccessful mission in 1996. The voyage was supposed to be a three-year plan to probe the atmosphere of the Red Planet, where the Phobos grunt would have released a Chinese orbiter. Later, a lander was supposed to collect 20 grams of rock and dust and make experiments to study the moon's environment. Launched in November 2011, Ground Control faced many challenges in trying to communicate with the probe. Deep space antennas used to track the craft were useless at a short distance because the probe crossed their field of view within a fraction of a second. This also made it difficult to transmit commands to the probe. This only left seven minutes for controllers to track the craft each time it orbited. After a botched attempt to send it away from Earth, specialists tried to fix the communications problem. But after languishing in Earth's orbit for two months with no progress, the 14.5-ton spacecraft fell into the Pacific Ocean off the coast of Chile. Most of the craft burnt up upon re-entry, but some larger pieces survived as a lasting reminder of the lofty ideals and crushing setbacks of the Russian space program. Number 3. Straddling Bus As more cars take to the roads, it makes sense that someone will try to come up with a way to combat bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic. Take for example the straddling bus. A Chinese invention, this futuristic-looking vehicle was a giant rolling tram that was able to slide over two lanes of traffic with space underneath for cars to continue on their drive. Designed to ride on tracks with an elevated body, the straddling bus first rolled out in 2017. Measuring 72 feet long and stretching 16 feet high, the elevated bus seemed like a good idea at the time. But it would be shady business going on behind the scenes that would be the downfall of this interesting design. 32 individuals from the investment company who had roped in lots of money to fund the vehicle's design were later arrested on charges of illegal fundraising, fraud, misrepresentation, and more. Money aside, one only has to take a look at the bus in action to see that even without the financial woes, there were problems waiting in the wings. After all, a hulking bus that would not only prevent the cars underneath from safely changing lanes, but also prevent significant risk to smaller vehicles and passengers was a massive danger. It proved to be too much for this rolling tram to be anything more than a pipe dream. Number 2. Boeing Yao-1 Weapon System When the U.S. Defense Department worked to create an airborne laser weapon system to attack ground targets, hopes from the military were high, but it wouldn't be their first. Before the Aero Optic Beam Control, or ABC turret, was developed in 2014, a previous attempt at a high-energy laser was tested. Known as the ABL, the airborne laser weapon was first fired in 2009 and 2010, but it didn't have that great of a track record. After successfully engaging several targets, only a few were destroyed due to what is described as a beam alignment problem. But that wouldn't stop the development of the Yao-1A high-energy laser weapon system. Designed to destroy tactical ballistic missiles, the system was carried aboard a modified Boeing 747 fighter aircraft. The weapon uses a set of three laser beam systems, one killing laser, and a set of illuminating laser beams as well as a beacon laser. But it was difficult to test the craft. It needed to fly over hostile territory, waiting for target missiles to be launched to focus the laser at a single point on the moving missile. To be able to launch it from a more stealthy position, the laser would have to be 20 to 30 times more powerful, which would come at a price tag of 1.5 billion and another 100 million a year to operate. As such, the program was scrapped and in 2011, the craft made its final flight to an Air Force base in Arizona with an area known as the Boneyard, where other aircraft are stored after being retired from service. Number 1. Camp Century The ancient bones of lost long creatures are not the only things revealed by melting ice. To the surprise and embarrassment of the U.S. military, a secret nuclear base surfaced in 2018 after being revealed from the continuing melting of the massive ice sheet in Greenland. Built in the 1950s, Camp Century was constructed as a refuge from potential attacks by the Soviet Union. With 4,000 kilometers of tracks and an underground train that was intended to house 600 nuclear missiles, the facility never had any. But diesel fuel, PCBs, and low-level radioactive material were left behind. And as the ice melted, the problem became clear. Someone would have to deal with the mess. It took Army of Engineers over a year to construct the site including a massive road to truck in tons of supplies to build the $8 million facility. Not necessarily a secret, it was touted as being the home to a research facility for scientific purposes, including some of the first ice core studies and revealing geological secrets that went back hundreds of thousands of years. But the main purpose of Camp Century was to test nuclear missiles. The code name for the secret military facility? Project Iceworm. The facility continued operations until 1966 when 
the tunnels began to collapse and the remnants of its operations were trapped underground. The nuclear reactor there is said to have produced thousands of gallons of radioactive waste which remains buried under the ice to this day. At the time, no one really worried about the underground base, thinking it would stay hidden under the ice for tens of thousands of years, but Mother Nature has a different plan due to climate change and with industrial chemicals a risk of the surrounding environment. The toxic waste could pose a serious threat to northern Greenland. As a U.S. military operation, one would think that they would be charged with dealing with the mess, but Greenland is a colony of Denmark, and since the U.S. didn't get permission to have nuclear missiles at the base, things became strained when word of the melting ice surfaced. Some scientists predicted that it will start losing ice by 2090, which means it is a race against time to not only clean up the site, but to stop a potentially devastating impact on the local environment. Thanks for watching. Which one did you think was the most interesting? Leave a comment with your thoughts down below and be sure to subscribe. See you next time.